All right, so you read the title and you're probably either thinking, wow, this is gonna be a sick video, or wow, this guy must be an idiot. Is he really gonna do this? Whichever way you're thinking, I understand both points. I'm just gonna ask you to watch the video before you make any assumptions. All right, so the James Bond scuba tank used in the 1965 James Bond movie, Thunderball. There's a big underwater fight scene where James is being chased into an underwater structure. He gets cornered in there, so he takes off his big clunky scuba tank and replaces it with this super small mini scuba tank. So the bad guys follow him into the structure, they find his scuba tank, but no James. Meanwhile, he's snuck outside, around, and drops an explosive right down on top of them. No more bad guys. Then he goes on to fight like a bunch more enemies for like at least five minutes, all still while using this tiny scuba tank. Bit of a tall order. I'm a little skeptical. But since then, many other movies have used this gadget. This mini breather will give you five minutes of air. Me has been watching Thunderball. <laughs> so this mini scuba tank has become a classic spy device. Something that you guys are very interested in. Getting a bunch of comments and you know how it goes. If you guys want it, I'll build it. That being said, if you have any project ideas for future stuff I should do, definitely leave them down in the description. I say this in every video, but it's how I get the ideas. And if you do end up liking this video, all I ask is that you subscribe and maybe drop a like, because I put a lot of work into these videos. So we're gonna be making one of these James Bond mini spy scuba tanks on the condition that none of you guys try this yourselves. Here's why. Obviously, scuba diving's dangerous, you know, we're not fish, but we're not meant to breathe underwater. So here's just a few of the many things that can go wrong when scuba diving. So air at the surface has one atmosphere of pressure, but when you go underwater, that same, call it cubic foot of air, compresses way down the deeper you go. So if you breathe that compressed air underwater, when you surface, it expands. If you don't breathe out, you see where this is going. Bye bye lungs. Also, if you're underwater for long periods of time, nitrogen can build up in your blood. That's why divers have to surface gradually to slowly release the nitrogen. Honestly, this list goes on. I'll leave Leave links in the description if you want to actually scuba dive for real. I'm sure a bunch of divers will tell you more of the dangers of this in the comments below. Bottom line, don't do this, and if you do, I'm not responsible. And I mean, it's not like that with all my projects. Like, I encourage you guys to make stuff and take inspiration from these videos. I always like to see what you guys make and uh, show off your stuff. So here's some projects that you guys made and sent to me on Instagram. Definitely send me your stuff guys at Jayla's video. And I actually saw a comment recently saying I was getting paid for these features. I'm not, not making any money off of this segment. Just sort of my way to give back to you guys, you know, hopefully inspire some future engineers. Please don't send me money for this, just DM me something you made that you're proud of. All right, so why am I making this? To answer that, we gotta understand what we're actually gonna be making. So if we look back at the James Bond scene, all the device is is what looks like two tiny air cartridges sticking out from the centerpiece. This is the first flaw with that design. So if we look at the air required to breathe for one minute for an average adult at rest, uh, it's about 15 breaths, give or take. It's not easily doubles or triples if you're exerting yourself like James was in the scene. So five minutes of swimming underwater, be anywhere from like 150 to 220 breaths. Figure out each breath has a volume of 0.05 cubic feet, 190 breath, that's about 10 cubic feet of air. We're assuming ideal gas is just under 12 moles. And if we're assuming the James Bond device has the same space as about two of those 12 gram CO2 cartridges, each of those has a volume of 0.84 cubic inches times two because there's two tanks on either side, 1.7 cubic inches. And using the ideal gas law PV equals NRT, we can solve for pressure and find out that the pressure we need to fit enough air for five minutes would need to be about 150,000 PSI. And two little tanks right next to your face. Now these calculations are just an estimate and you can find my sources down below. <laughs> nerd, nerd, nerd. But if we're anywhere in the ballpark, this is completely absurd. Like a normal scuba tank has about 3,000 PSI of pressure, so puts in a little perspective for you. Now maybe he was using some sort of like rebreather technology, so it recycles the air, uh, or some sort of gills so it filters out oxygen from the water, like which it doesn't by the way, like if you do a little bit of research, you can see that the prop team actually used these CO2 cartridges to build the thing. And you can still see bubbles coming out of the device, which doesn't happen in a rebreather. So if it was, which is not, we're not gonna go down that route. Especially because there's already been fake attempts to sell products like this. I think it was called like the Titan or something. It was a device that looks like the one from James Bond. It supposedly had like electric gills to filter out oxygen from the water, which would have been so sick, but was fake and not viable for a number of reasons, at least with today's technology. The point is we've been getting lied to by Hollywood, by startups. No one's made anything like this, but that changes today. That's why I'm making one. I wanna see how it would perform if James Bond and all these other shows were actually real. First, a couple more quick calculations. The math 
isn't really on our side. Those CO2 cartridges are rated at about 800 PSI. Maybe you could push it to a thousand, but I really wouldn't push it much higher than that. Standard 12 gram CO2 cartridge holds about 0.07 cubic feet or about a breath and some change. Not great, but luckily these CO2 cartridges come in all sizes. So we could probably step it up to like a 25 gram CO2 cartridge without anyone knowing. Maybe this is actually used, I don't know made up. Not more than doubles our airspace, so now we're looking at about like four to five breaths. Still not great, but in like a life or death situation of a spy, you know, could be helpful. So to build this, we need a way to replace the CO2 in these cartridges with breathable air. Now while you can get these cartridges with oxygen in them, we can't actually breathe that pure. Like our bodies evolved to breathe air, which is a mixture of a bunch of things, mostly nitrogen. Um, so that's what we need. So to do this, I ordered up some of the smallest CO2 bike tire inflators I could find. These should work because it gives us a way to control the airflow and also has mounting threads, we can attach a fill adapter. So to fill these things, I'm gonna be using a paintball HPA hand pump. This is a special pump that's rated for 3000 PS. And I made an adapter to connect the CO2 cartridge to the hand pump. So if we open up the CO2 cartridge valve, pump it up to around 800 PSI, close the CO2 valve, now we have breathable air inside the CO2 cartridge. One more thing to add to our potential list of dangers. These aren't meant to be refilled like this, so there's the potential for explosion, but I mean that's sort of the case with all my videos but I figure it's rated at about 800 PSI, so if we stay in that range, I think we're good. But I also figured out that some of the CO2 bike pumps you can get don't exactly like when you try and force air the other way. They would just leak, so you have to get the metal ones, which looks cooler anyways. Don't take that as a tip on how to make these, it's just process of the video. I also made sure to clean out the insides of the CO2 cartridge as best I could. I flushed them with air and water just to try and remove any of the toxins that might be inside that we wouldn't want to breathe. But I mean, we're only going to have a couple breaths with this anyway, so I figured you'd probably inhale more toxins from just like sitting by a campfire. So we've got a way to pressurize the mini tanks. Now let's 3D print a cool mounting bracket to attach them together. So I modeled one up on SolidWorks and also added a one-way valve. Now this is actually very important because uh, we don't have room for a proper regulator. So what this does is allows air to escape if there's ever too much. So if we ever turn the valve on and too much air comes out, it'll blow out the valve instead of blowing into our lungs and again, popping them. <laughs> again, don't try this. So 3D printed that, assembled everything, and now we've got ourselves a mini James Bond scuba tank. Small enough to fit in a jacket or a cigar tube, just like the movies. about as wide as my hand. Uh, again, you can experiment with different cartridge sizes. Two valves on each side, so you just open them. It just kind of fits in your mouth like this. Open it when you want air. When that one runs out, open the other one. Get a couple breaths. One-way valve on top right here, um, and the cartridges are removable if you want to store it in an even smaller spot. Yeah, pretty cool. Now, one benefit of this is because these are so small, it only takes a couple of pumps to actually pressurize it completely. Whereas if we were using a larger tank, it could take hours. Speak from experience, not fun. All right, so to test this out, I'm gonna be staying in shallow waters, no more than 10 feet of diving, and we've only got a few breaths of air, so nitrogen buildup really shouldn't be an issue. Worst comes to worst though, I've got witnesses to drag me out of the water if uh, anything goes bad. With that being said, this is how a James Bond scuba tank would actually work if it was real, which it is now, so enjoy. Oh, oh, it, it So in all honesty, I had a lot of fun testing this out. It was really cool to be able to swim around with this thing in my pocket and my waistband, be able to take it out and then breathe underwater, even if it was just for a couple breaths. Is it actually useful though? I would say yes, but in a very niche way. I would say it's a fun pool toy, but that's probably a bad idea. I guess in a very last resort, if you had to hold your breath just for a little bit longer, it could help. I actually did a breath holding test in shallow waters with witnesses, see how much of a difference it would actually make. And I was able to almost double my underwater time with this device. And actually bet I could have gone longer with this thing because when I was just holding my breath like straight up, 
Um, I wasn't moving around and like fidgeting with this and trying to put it in my mouth and breathe. Um, so it was a little bit more relaxed. So I wasn't wasting any movements. Also, when I was breathing out of this thing, I didn't push it too hard just because I didn't want to pass out and still don't fully trust this. If you did need more time underwater though, you could probably carry two of these because they're just so small. Then you would have twice the air or you could experiment with bigger cartridges. I think these cartridges go up to 70 grams. So with two of those in theory, that'd give you like 20 breaths, which is actually getting to be useful. But I mean, if you're gonna do that, you should probably just invest in like a real emergency dive tank like spare air and also learn how to actually scuba dive. I actually did a video with one of those where I put it in a mask and I was able to be underwater for a couple minutes. So that was pretty cool. So all in all, this device is probably best used in the movies until technology catches up. But now I can say I have a real working James Bond scuba tank. And because of this, I couldn't resist shooting a little action scene of my own. Three measures of Gordon's, one of vodka, half a measure of Kina Lily. I understand double O's have a very short life expectancy. I think someone wants to kill you. We got snipers up there. We got a couple choppers circling the area. So we're gonna circumvent them from the leftward flank. We're just gonna outflank them, all right? We're gonna outflank them. We're gonna outflank them. We're gonna outflank them. Bravo six. Go <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Any weird looks we get? Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. So you guys know that was actually like a real train I filmed. Maybe a little bit of movie magic, but you know. Don't, Don't be suspicious. suspicious. Sense of this part. Oh, honey, no. Oh, no. That's a wrap. So there it is, guys. Real life 007 mini scuba tank. So I hope you liked it. And if you did, please drop a like and subscribe. Once again, don't try this, but do comment your ideas. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.